So the two-dimensional drawing shows a base of right on 11 meters tall. Find the volume. How do you find the volume of a prism? Oh, not English. How do you find the volume of a prism? You look it up on Google and then mess it up. Wait, what, what, which one are we on? 11? How do you find the volume of a prism? Yep. Are we on, are we on 60 yet? Uh, just you the, do, you do, the area of Area of base on tight, good job. So area of base, not too difficult. We do have to break this up into two different shapes, or, unless you remember the area of a trapezoid, but let's just do that. Let's just do this, right? This is a four by five rectangle. And then what's the dimensions of the triangle here? If this whole thing is eight. Three by four. Okay, so what's the area of the rectangle? Mr. Flat, I'm going to correct you on the board. You forgot to put the 23 after the pretest. Yeah. It's a free problem set. So that's 20. What about this? What's the area of that little triangle? Uh, yes, because based on site divided by two, don't forget to divide by two. Good job. So that's 20 plus six times the height, which is 11. You see what I did? I just added those two areas together. You guys know the shortcut to multiply by 11? You, oh, yeah. Uh, you add just the two add together it. and then put it in between. Yep. So two and six go there and then add it together and goes there. 82, 86 wow. cubic meters. Don't forget the cubic label. Okay. That sound all right? You guys good with number 11? Mm -hmm. All right, number 12, how do you find the surface area? Well, how many different faces are there on this little tent? Five, 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 five. One, two, three, four, five. So front, back, left, right, and bottom. There's no top, right? So I'm gonna do that just separately. So we're gonna go front. It's a good idea to make a little checklist. Left, right. Bottom. Okay. So, how do you find the area of the front? Uh, you can just make them into a rectangle, right? Um, uh, like the front and the back at the same time. Like or this. if you flip them over, okay. Wow. Well, yeah, it's just base times height divided by two. Good knowledge, Ben. Or if you make it into a rectangle, then it'd, yeah, it'd just be eight times fifteen. But sixteen times eight divided by two, same thing. Just eight times 15, so your front is gonna be 120 plus your back, which is also the 120, okay? Okay. All right, and then uh, what's the left and right? Uh, 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 187. 187, right, 17 times 11. Remember the one and the seven and then add it together for the eight in the middle. So 187 on both the left and right. Good job. And then the bottom. Uh, 176. Good. So 16 oh, times 11, math. which is 176. That's good math. Good job, man. So 240. Let's see here. 240 oh, plus um, 374 plus 176. Let's see here. That's four, five. 50, 240 plus 550 is 790. Square inches. Don't forget this label, guys. Pay attention. This label is square units because we're still finding the area. That looks like a Q. You yes, look it. like a Q. No, what, what actually is that? Is that two? Yeah, no, square like inches. Okay. Oh, there's a little curve. Right above the queue. <laughs> All right, ready? 13? Yeah. Okay, 13. Find R and S. These are similar triangles, which means you can have proportions. These are proportionate. Okay, so let's see. How do we find R? Well, we could make a little. Uh... Hey, quit talking. Okay, you could do it this way. You guys could do. 
this where you have like a, a little chart if you wanted to, um, left, right, bottom. Okay, if you have left, right, bottom, you have six, 15, 12, and then over here is eight, R and S. Okay, so look, there's a proportion right there that you could do. Eight times 15 divided by six. See what um, we did? For sure. So you can set up the proportion anyway. You can even look at, you can even see a proportion here. Do you see it? It's six over 12 equals um, eight over S. Do you see that proportion? You can also do it like this. 15 over 12 equals R over S, but you need the R or the S first. But this works. Let's do this. What is that? So R equals 20. What? You'll multiply 15 times eight divided by six. 15 times eight is 120 divided by six is 20. Wow. Okay, oh, so oh, now that I know oh, what R is, oh, so now that yes. I know what R is, guys, look, I could do this proportion, 12 times 20 divided by 15, or I could still use that 6 over 8 proportion. 6 over 8 equals 12 over S. Okay, so S is not equal, what did you say? Oh, I thought you said something else. Yep, equals 16. Ooh, I'm gonna run. So, oh. I figured I'd give you guys a chance. And then I Oh, yeah. 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 All right. You guys okay with number 13? Um, yep. All right. So you can watch the video. Good job and you're devious. Wait, what is the. Is that an A? Murdering. Is that an A? A kid. Okay, guys, now we've got an equation. This equation um, looks a little bit more complicated because of its fractions, but it's still a two step equation. You have to get two things by itself, or one thing by itself, so you have to get rid of two things. So, first thing I'm going to do is mixed numbers are dumb, so let's change them all to improper fractions while we can. How about that? So that's negative. 5 halves x minus 11 fourths. Do you see what I'm doing? Equals 9 eighths. All I did was copy it down, let's put the improper fractions in instead of the mixed numbers. Okay? Now, what two things do we have to get rid of? There are two on the left. You have to get rid of that, you have to get rid of that. What do you want to get rid of first? The one that's by the five sack, the 11 fourths. Five over five. Yeah, get rid of this. This one's too close. We're going to get rid of that one last, right? So how do you get rid of minus 11 fourths? You add 11 fourths. Well, 11 fourths is just 22 eighths. Okay, I just got a common denominator for the one above it there. So 11 fourths and 22 eighths are the same thing, right? So add them together, you get 31 eighths. But you're st you still have this negative 5 halves x. How do you get rid of negative 5 halves? Well, if it was divide. just minus 5 halves, then yeah. Divide. But the negative 5 halves is multiplying by x. So to get rid of multiplication, you divide. Divide by negative 5 halves. Divide by negative 5 halves. Okay? So let's do that. Copy dot flop. You're dividing 31 eighths by negative 5 halves. So I'm going to go negative 2 over 5. See what I did? Okay, cross cancel the two and the eight, and you're just left with negative 31 twentieths. That's it. That's an ugly answer, but that's the answer. That feel okay? Yep. Same two-step equation. You got to get rid of two things, but it's more complicated when they're fractions. Okay. All right, number 15. I said that joke a while. Yeah, I said that about like five years ago. Yes, sir. I said that yesterday, man. I don't think you died. I wish I could have 
Number 15, graph this line, choose zero, four. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna choose, they give us X's to try. And then we just need to put in, and you don't even have to choose those X's. You can choose whatever X's you want, but let's put those zero, four, and negative four. So what happens when you plug in zero for X? What do you get for Y? What do you get for y when you plug when you replace x with zero? Four. four. Which is zero plus four, which is four. What if you plug in four for x? What do you get for y? Eight. Eight. You see how we're getting these? What if you plug in negative four for zero. x? Zero. What do you get? You get zero. They cancel out. Okay, so now all you have to do is, is graph this. Remember, this is left or right. And this is up or down. So the y value goes up or down, the x value goes left or right. So we're gonna go zero left or right and then up four. So there's where that is. Four, eight, one, two, three, four, up eight, five, six, seven, eight, up to there. So that's where this guy is. Cause really this is just four comma eight. This is zero comma four. This is negative four comma zero. So that's four over to the left here and then up or down zero. So this is what that line looks like. Okay, can you handle that? So figure out what X's and Y's were, graph it, and then connect the dots. And then it's a little off because the graph isn't perfect. Okay. Number 16, between what two consecutive integers is the square root of 68? If you're not going to, but if you're going to do this on a calculator, what do you think your calculator would say about? The wrong answer. Syntax error. Square root of 68. What does that mean? What times itself equals 68? Eight point. So eight point something yeah. is what it would say. Because eight times eight is 64. So the square root of 68 is a little over eight. Eight point something. So what two integers is that in between? It's in between eight and nine. So you can do it like this if you want. This is how the cool kids are writing it. Absolutely not. No, X not. is in between eight and nine. Okay. Or you could just say it's in between eight and nine. Okay? You guys handle that problem? Yeah. yeah. What's the square root of 50? It's in between what two numbers? Four and six. Well, those aren't two consecutive numbers. Okay. And it's not in between four and six. Five, Five and six. Five and ten, it's somewhere there, but what two consecutive numbers is it? Five, right? six, and seven. Six is times square root of thirty-six. Seven, six, six, seven, seven, six and seven. Seven and eight. What? Seven squared is forty-nine. Eight squared oh. is sixty-four. Fifty is in between forty-nine and fifty sixty-four. Okay. Oh, I... All right. Yeah. Can you guys do number seventeen in your head? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I can. That's four tenths. It's two fifths. Not two four tenths. tenths. Four twenty fifths. Four twenty fifths. Yeah. So you're multiplying uh, it yeah, yeah. by itself. I'm, I'm so this is two fifths times wrong. another two fifths, which is four twenty fifths. Okay. I won't say four tenths. You got it? Yep. All right. Number eighteen. This is uh, just oh a lot of details, but order of operations is all you need for this. Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna let this reflect it this time. <laughs> yeah, I think we can all read it. 18, so negative two. I could get right, I just don't want to. Five minus three plus four. Minus bracket. The answer is seven. And no. five minus five times. Hey, bro. I'm just gonna. Um, I see you three plus four in there, so the answer is seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you want to do first? Parenthetics. Oh, Parenthetics. I don't know if that's a word, but we'll go with it. All right, so this is a separate parenthesis from this. You can do this at the same time if you want. 
It's okay. Um, so inside of this parenthesis, there's parentheses inside of this parenthesis or this bra these brackets. So you have to do that first. And that's fine. I'm going to chicken scratch that. You guys okay with that? Yeah. So what do we get inside of this parenthesis? Uh, six. Six. And what do you get inside of this little parenthesis? Negative, <gasps> Negative yeah. 10. Okay, now we're still, we still got this parenthesis left. So we have to do this one. What is this? What's that? Uh, 50. No, 50. Positive 50. Negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, so we're, um, we got negative 2 times 6 minus 50. What do you do here? Uh, 6 times negative 2. Yep, so negative 12. Minus 50. What's He's negative 12 minus 50? Nope. Negative 38. Negative 38. My bad. No. Neither. Nope. Oh, yeah. I don't know how to do that. Come on, guys. What? what are you doing wrong? Chicken scratch? Yeah, chicken oh, scratch. Oh, no. Now you're adding. 62. Oh, yeah. Oh. Negative 62. Don't that's, go too fast on these, guys. Do. Don't blow it. All right, nine nineteen a. What does that little four mean inside of that radical? Let's stop drumming on your leg. Obviously distracting. What times itself four times? Yeah, what times itself four times equals sixteen? All right, okay, good job. Not saying four. This is not sixteen divided by four. It's what number times itself four times equals sixteen? It's two. Circle that one. All right, number nine. What if there's no number? What if it's just radical 49? What does that mean? Yeah, what's the square root of 49? Seven. Pretty easy, right? Okay, last problem is another order of operations. Can you guys do that one? The which one, who? Number 20. No. Oh, that's literally the same one. Just it is. Well, it looks a little different. No. no. But very similar. <laughs> negative 5 times negative 2 minus 5 plus 5. Ooh, that's nice. Minus bracket, parenthesis, negative 2 minus 4, dot 3. Okay, what do you want to do first? The parenthetics. Parenthetics. What? Okay. So this is negative five times negative two. Look, you know why I did that? Because look, minus five plus five. These cancel. That's nice. When you have a negative five added to a five, it's just zero. So you're just left with negative two. Okay, minus, what's negative two minus four? Uh, nope. Negative six. Negative six. Negative six. That was the same issue you had in the, a couple of ones ago. Don't forget, chicken scratch. If you don't, you'll lose. So oh, that's chicken run. Negative six <laughs> times three. All right, so we still got that to do. So this is negative five times negative two, all minus negative 18. What's minus negative 18? Where's the mistake? You forgot to write the parentheses around the negative 6. No, you don't need those. You forgot to write the parentheses around the negative 18. Blah, blah. Okay. So now it's a positive 10 plus a positive 18, which is 28. And that is pre algebra. Black math! Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math!